in this video we'll be recording the we'll be solving the cs1b paper for july 2022 attempt uh which has come here so cs1b paper so let's see what the paper says is identify the probability distribution that best fits the below question calculate the following using r functions first we need to identify the distribution and then we'll identify uh, then we'll solve uh, the question so it says assume golf balls from driving range next door lands in your yard at an average rate of three balls per hour during the day so there is average rate of three is there and what is the probability that 10 or fewer golf balls will land in your yard during the afternoon assuming that the afternoon is five hours long so from this question we identify this is a poison distribution and then lambda will be nothing but five into three fifteen because this is the average rate of three and afternoon is at five so lambda t uh three into five will become a lambda and then we can calculate a probability from R. So that is lambda is 5 into 3. And then we need to calculate probability x less than or equal to 10. So p poise of 10 comma lambda. So if lambda is 15, p poise will be 0 0.118. That is 11.84%. And then you are surveying people exiting from poll booth and asking them if they voted independently. The probability the person voted independently is 20%. What is the probability the 70 people must be asked if you can find five people who voted independently. So this is a negative binomial distribution, but the question is of type one negative binomial. We need to solve type two negative binomial in R. R only supports type two negative binomial. How does it work is probability is given as 0.2. K is given us as five, that is five people. And whereas X is 70. So since negative binomial consider failures, so there are 65 failures in total. So D and binomial of 65 comma K is five and P is 0 0.2. So we can solve this you can also check your answer from the uh, uh, scratch method of negative binomial type one which is uh, basically x minus one k minus one uh, x minus one c k minus one into p to the power k into p to the uh, into q to the power x minus k so this is also giving me the same answer okay then we can uh, next term assume you, uh, you flip a coin 100 times what is the number n says that 90 percent of the time the number of heads is less than equal to the number of uh, less than equal to number n so basically this is the binomial distribution and n is given to us as 100 fair points so of probability 0 0.5 now we can do q binom which is 0 0.9 because they've been said 90 percent and n comma p so this is will give me an answer of Sorry, I did not run P and N. So P and Q. This will give me an answer of 56 because 56 is that is 56 is the, the number of heads uh, less than or equal to N will give me 90 percent. Okay. Next is a researcher is waiting outside of a library to ask people if they support a certain law. The probability that a given sub, uh, person supports the law is P is equal to 0 0.2. What is the probability that the fourth person the researcher talks to is the first person to support the law? So this is geometric distribution. But again, in R, it is a number of failures which is taken. So P is 0.2. Fourth person means there are three failures before that. So D geom of 3, 0.2 will give me the answer. Then assume the light bulb has a mean lifetime of 1000 hours. What is the probability the light bulb survives to 2000 hours? This is the exponential distribution where mean lifetime is given to us as 1000. So I can calculate lambda as 1 by n. And then dxp because probability x equals to 2000 has to be calculated, which is 0 0.00013533. Then assume a random variable z is distributed according to normal distribution with mean 6 and standard deviation 4. What is the probability that Z takes on a value between minus 1 and 3? So here it's a normal distribution already given in the question. We just have to cal calculate the value. So we take P norm of 3, 6, 4. Remember standard deviation is given. So we do not need to take a square root. And P norm of minus 1, 6, 4. Difference between the two will give me the probability. Very direct question uh, of 26 marks. Very, very direct. Doesn't take any time. Next question two is of 
study uh, in a study done at the National Institute of Science and Technology, as well as fibers of filters were recorded, counted as a part of the project to develop measurements. Standards for asbestos concentration operator counted the number of fibers in each 23, yielding the following count. So the data is given. I just copied the data with the C and the data is there. Then we need to calculate Q1, Q3 and interquartile range. So Q1 is quantile of data comma 0 0.25. Q3 is quantile of data comma 0 0.75 and IQR of data will give me the interquartile range directly. They have also said assume that the Poisson distribution of the unknown parameter describes the variability. Before that, the total plot the histogram and label it appropriately. So histogram of data, I have given right is equals to false because this is a discrete data. You can give, you can ignore that and just labeled with number uh, the X lab, Y lab in this. Next is use the method of maximum likelihood to estimate the parameter lambda. So we can use the fit distribution function directly, either library mass and fit distribution data comma poison, which will give us the value of lambda, or we can create the function, which is function of lambda minus of sum of depois data comma lambda comma log equals to true. And we can give the initial estimate using the method of moments. We can give mean of data and take an MLE. So lambda, which is MLE dollar estimate is nothing but is equal to the same answer, 29, 24.95. So both value, both give me the same answer. Okay. Next is test the hypothesis whether the mean fiber count is equal to 25. Comment on the results. So mean fiber count is mu is equal to 25 or mu not equal to 25. Since the sample data is known, we can we can know the sample variance. We'll use t dot test where t dot test data is equals given. Mu is testing for 25 and confidence interval at 95% confidence interval since nothing is said in the question. Now, since p value is greater than 0 0.05, we have insufficient evidence to reject H0. That means mu is equal to 25. Okay. Calculate the standard error of the parameter lambda. So if you see when we were calculating from the fit distribution method, we already got the standard error, which is 1.04. So either you can use this fit distribution standard error or you can calculate the standard error, which is nothing but SQRT of lambda by length of data. Okay, standard error for a particular parameter is nothing but standard error, which is again 1.04 only. So it gives us the same answer either from the fit distribution method or from this method. Okay. Next is they told us to calculate the 90% confidence interval of standard error. So this is 90% confidence interval of standard error. We do not know what uh, generally the standard error follows. So we take that, it, uh, we assume that it follows the uh, uh, normal distribution. And we see, we always say that uh, the standard error will not likely be to be twice the, twice more, uh, or the confidence interval will not likely to be more than standard error. So we what we take is the upper low upper confidence interval will nothing but be two into standard error. Uh, the standard error is unlikely to be greater than this. So two into standard error will give me the upper confidence interval that is two point zero eight something. And lower confidence interval if you can take zero which is institute which includes zero error or you can take it to a minus two into SE both will both will be correct. Okay. So we can see the standard error lies between minus 2.08 to 2.08 or we can see it lies between 0 to 2.08. Okay, this is how you can determine the confidence interval for this. Calculate the probability of fiber count exceeding 30 with the help of central limit theorem. So probability of fiber count exceeding 30 since our data follows from a, a Poisson distribution using CLT, we'll need a continuity correction to make it as a normal distribution. So if from CLT, we can say that X follows Poisson lambda comma lambda, uh, sorry, normal lambda comma lambda. If I say, if the data follows Poisson distribution from normal approximation, we can say N follows lambda comma lambda. Probability X equals to 30 with normal distribution is 1 minus P norm, 30.5, including correct continuity correction, lambda and SQRT of lambda because this lambda is variance. So this will be SD and then we can calculate which is 13.14%. If we calculate from your, uh, I'll just see whether this is okay if it is true. Second, let's see. Yes. 
या टू पॉइंट वन थ्री वन फोर ओके नेक्स्ट क्वेश्चन थ्री एनालिसिस वी कैरी डाउट वॉज टू टू इन्वेस्टिगेट द एनुअल एवरेज रेनफॉल ऑफ टू कंट्रीज डेटा इज गिवन टू अस फॉर दिस ईरान एंड बेल्जियम डायरेक्टली अगेन कॉपी पेज द डेटा फ्रॉम देयर Perform a suitable test to determine whether rainfall in both countries is equal variance or not at five percent confidence level. So at five percent confidence level, if I check variance dot test Iran Belgium ratio is equals to one and confidence dot interval is equals to zero point nine five and then give the answer. So if my if I see from here p value is zero point zero four three eight five which is less than zero point zero five. So we have sufficient evidence to reject H not that the variances are not equal. Okay, next is test whether the mean rainfall in both countries is equal or not, uh, uh, at five percent. So we can take the test the difference between the means again using the t dot test. We see Iran Belgium alternative is equal to two sided and I store it as test. So if I run test, I see that p value is again very less than zero point zero five at five percent confidence interval. Okay. With uh, which is very less, so we have uh, sufficient evidence to reject H not that the true difference, uh, in mean is not equal, okay. Not equal to zero. There is a difference in mean. Calculate the ninety five percent confidence interval for the mean. So test dollar ninety five percent confidence interval is minus forty two point seven nine and minus seventeen point eight five, okay. And uh, comment on the results in part two and part three. So when we see comment on the results, so in part three you have written that we reject the test. In part three, if you see the difference in the confidence interval, since the mean difference between means uh, will be positive. If I see the difference between the means one fifty six minus one twenty six, if the test statistic is that from our uh, distribution, the the difference. So mean of x is this, mean of y is this, and difference between the mean will be around one fifty six minus one twenty six will be around thirty. So this is positive. It does not lie in this interval. Hence we can say it is correct. Okay. This is also a very direct question. There is nothing which was there much R codes involved. The next is marketing data contains the impact of three advertising media: YouTube, Facebook, and newspaper on sales. The first. Three columns are advertising budget in thousand dollars, along with the fourth column is sales. The advertising experiment has been repeated two hundred times. So that two hundred uh data, there's a data CSV. So I have imported the data, and I saw these are the data headers. Okay, then we have been told to perform a linear regression uh analysis. Uh, we have been told to plot the data, analyze of a trend of how sales varies with the advertising budget, and comment on the same. So if I do a plot of data and from sales, if I see for YouTube, the sales is positively correlated. Okay, as it moves above, it is not strongly positive, but initially it is very strongly positive also. For Facebook, it is fairly positive. So this is strongly positive. We can say this is fairly positive. We can say this is very dispersed. Okay, so it you can say this is very dispersed, very uh very very weak. positive correlation between the data okay next we can say perform a linear uh, regression analysis on the data and your answer should include a summary of the data so linear regression analysis is sales follows youtube plus facebook plus newspaper they have main, main, it's mentioned in the question simple linear regression so you cannot include any double parameters it has to be a linear regression on the data okay and summary of fit which is there And then they've asked us uh, nothing. Next, as they are asked, comment on the significance of the parameters of the model and justify our observations from part one. So, if I see from the summary, see intercept is significant, whereas YouTube is significant, Facebook is also significant, and then the p value is less than zero point zero five, and also there are stars. Whereas here in newspaper, p value is greater than zero point zero five, so this is an insignificant parameter. Which is consistent to what we observed also that uh, news pay of uh, YouTube and Facebook have a correlation, strong correlation with sales. Various phase uh, newspaper do not have a strong correlation with the sales, so it can be omitted. Then they say calculate the correlation between independent and dependent variables. So I have to calculate the correlation and calculate only the fourth column because I need to see the correlation from sales to each uh, of the media's. 
So sales to YouTube is 0 0.782, sales to Facebook is 0 0.576, and sales to newspaper is 0 0.222. So from correlation also, we can see that this has the least correlation between the data. Put an improved model in part two using an answer in part four. State linear regression formula explaining all the parameters. So again, fit two is data dollar sales. It follows YouTube and Facebook. We have dropped newspaper and we've calculated a summary and we have, you can explain all the parameters that intercept is this, YouTube is this, Facebook is this, that is completely on you. So uh, the formula is given, which model is better in between part two and part five and why? So if you calculate, if you see the fit to adjusted R squared uh, summary of, Fit some of, initial fit was summary of fit dollar adjusted R. Oh, just let me see names of summary of fit. The names of summary of fit as adjusted dot R squared. This so ADG dollar ADG dot R dot squared. Summary of squared, sorry. So this is eight zero point eight nine five six, and let's copy this also same as summary of fit of two, which is the same. So we can see that the maximum between this is zero point. So fit two is a better fit than fit one. Okay, this is why we can say. Then what is the maximum sales generated? So we can say with maximum sales generated from which dot max, which is uh, 176 through and 176 through maximum sales generated is 32.4 with the value of YouTube and Facebook given to us. Based on the linear regression model fitted in question five. So we have only really taken YouTube and YouTube. What is the predicted value for maximum sales generated in question seven? So uh, for 32.5, we have 33. 332.28 and 58.68. So we are predicting the model coefficient of 2,1, which is intercept, then newspaper, uh, then YouTube, and then Facebook. I've used the formula, this formula to get the answer of my value. Maximum sales is 21, 20, the predicted value of sales is 29.74. Now there are what is the relative error between the estimated and the actual sales computed in question seven. So 32.4 was the actual predicted is 29.74. So the relative error is actual minus estimated by actual, which is 0 0.08. 8.2% is the relative error. Very, very direct paper of CS1. There can't be any more direct papers. Now there were no plots in the question, only two plots were there, and there were and it is them, uh, direct questions which can which can help people score marks over here. So yes, this is this was a very direct paper for July 2022 CS1B. Thank you.